Blender sculpting is a more streamlined and intuitive way to edit an object's vertex placement. The advantage of creating models in Blender using the sculpting interface is that it's more intuitive. This workflow also has some drawbacks. Sculpting requires a lot more geometry to create smooth surfaces in subdivision modeling. To counter that, there are some processes that you can use to optimize your sculpt's geometry and maintain their detail. We'll discuss those in a later video. This video will focus on the fundamentals of sculpting in Blender and should give you the information needed to create your own sculpts. Number one, creating your base mesh. The first step of modeling anything is creating your model's general shape. You can liken this to an artist adding physical clay to begin their artwork. Unlike with subdivision surface modeling, there's no need to worry about the topology of the objects you're adding to your scene. You also don't need to worry about connecting these objects in any way. Every sculpt is a process of layered refinement, and the first step is undeniably messy. As a note, creating a base mesh is arguably the most crucial step in sculpting. The sculpting tools are limited in their ability to move large masses of geometry. It takes practice to understand what to include in a base mesh, so experiment and learn how to improve your processes through each sculpt. Number two, remeshing your base mesh. The more detail you want on your models, the more geometry you'll need to support it. Once your base mesh is created, you'll need to combine and remesh your objects. This allows you to sculpt everything together. It's common to combine and remesh your base meshes in stages. This allows you to add detail to your model without accidentally affecting other parts of your sculpts. So if I add just a couple of objects in here, I'll do a cube and how about a sphere. So let's pretend I'm making something super abstract that, right? So I'm going to add a bunch of geometry to both of these and I'm going to add just a little bit of sculpting. So you can see as I sculpt the sphere and I could come down to the cube, but nothing's happening to the cube. That's because these are two separate objects. And so if I switch over to the cube over here, I could sculpt and it's sculpting, but I can't sculpt on the sphere. So in order to fix this problem, we have to join our objects together and then remesh. And so let's start off by joining them together. And I'm gonna do that just by clicking my first object, second object and control J. So now they're one object. But let's go back to sculpt mode and see what's happening. So you can see I can sculpt both of them, but they're not really acting like they're one object. They're acting like there's two separate pieces of mesh that just kind of have the runoff of <clears throat> the brush affecting them. So if I go over here, you can see that even though they're joined, the sphere is being continued under the cube and likewise, the cube is being continued through the sphere. And so in order to fix that problem, we need to remesh them. So in order to remesh, you go over to sculpt mode and you click remesh and you choose the voxel size. So the lower the voxel size, the higher the density, but depending on your computer, it might not be able to handle that. And the higher the voxel size, the lower the resolution, but also easier for your computer. So you can see that's the voxel size I chose, which is not what I want. So if I go back and I'll choose something like that, or let's go a little bit lower. Okay, so you can see that now the sphere doesn't continue under the, the cube and vice versa. And so when I sculpt, it all sculpts as one object. Another thing to keep in mind is Dine Topo. And so if you click this, Essentially what Dintopo does is it's a dynamic remesher. And so it will remesh where you sculpt and where you add more detail and increase the geometry of that area. Basically what it does is it allows you to add detail to certain areas while still keeping a low geometry count in other areas and it just helps your computer perform better. So yeah, that's how you join objects and remesh them. Now let's jump back into the video. Number three, sculpting with Blender's brushes. Once your base mesh is remeshed, you can use Blender's brushes to refine the detail of your model. Let's look at some of Blender's best brushes to get you started. There are a lot of brushes and tools you can use in sculpt mode. I just wanted to walk through the eight most important and most used tools. And from there, you can kind of experiment and play around with other things to see how they work for you. 
Okay, so the first one I wanted to talk about is the draw tool, which is found all the way at the top. And you can see if you draw on a mesh with a fair amount of geometry, you get a pretty smooth result. And the draw brush is, is used a lot for adding detail. So you can see how this stroke is created. You have the inner circle, which indicates the strength of the brush. And then you have the outer circle, which indicates the size of the brush. So if you come up here, you can change the radius. You can make, that's the brush size. And you can also change the strength. And so you see when the strength is at 100%, you don't see that inner circle because it's all the way at the edge of the radius. And you can see it gets a lot stronger. Another thing to keep in mind is you see how as I'm adding this brush, it's pushing the, the mesh out. You can reverse it by clicking this negative direction here. And now when you brush a surface, it pushes the mesh inwards. So one last thing on this panel up here is if you click stroke, you can change the stroke method. And by default, it's set to space. But if you go down to line, this is one that I use a lot. It pretty much creates just a fall off line that you can preview before you release and it allows you to create straight lines. Okay, moving on, we have Draw Sharp, which is similar to the Draw Brush, but it kind of creates more of a crease at the bottom. And again, you can always change the direction of the brush if you want. Clay Brush. The Clay Brush is an additive tool, and so if you don't have enough geometry or volume in a specific part of your model, you can add clay to it just to fill it up, which is super useful. Clay strips is the same as a clay brush, but it's just a little bit sharper. And so using the clay strips brush allows you to add mesh a little bit faster than the clay brush, but usually it just comes down to personal preference, which one you want to use. Okay, next is a smooth brush. And the smooth brush, as the name might suggest, smooths your geometry. So you can see this, this UV sphere has a ton of geometry, but it has a lot of, it's very angular as well. So if I were to bring this radius up and the strength up just so you can see and smooth out the sphere, you can see it averages out the position of all the polygons and smooths out wherever you brush along. Okay, the grab brush is down here. And so the grab brush, again, has a name, all of these are named pretty well. If you click and drag, it allows you to move with pretty good control whichever part of the mesh you're, you're grabbing. And so I said before that Blender doesn't have great capabilities for moving large quantities of mesh. The grab brush is the best at doing that. And so if the shape of something isn't quite how you want, you might use a grab brush to just move some, some of the polygons around. One thing to bring up here is you have up here the symmetry options and so you can use brushes with symmetry along the x y and z axis and for instance if you're sculpting a face it allows you to apply the same effect on one side of the model to the other side of the model so the mask tool is over here and the brush for that you have a couple different brushes you have box masks the box mask allows you to draw a specific area you want to mask and you also have a mask brush you can use where's that here that just allows you to paint in a mask and a mask essentially tells your model where not to let a brush affect it. So if we go back to, how about the clay strips brush? You can see as I'm brushing along my model, anywhere there's a mask, the, the black part of a mask, nothing's happening. So here, absolutely nothing is happening. Here, because it's not fully black, you have a... It, varies in how much it's working. You can also invert a mask by going up to this panel up here and clicking mask, invert mask, and that just reverts it as you might expect. And you can also clear a mask by going to clear mask or alt M. Okay, and so the last tool I wanna to go over is a trim tool, and that is located down here with the scissors. So you can choose the box trim and the lasso trim, <clears throat> depending on how you wanna trim it. And essentially what it does is you select an area you want to remove from your object and highlight that and it trims that how you indicated. And one thing to notice is um, it doesn't add good geometry where you trimmed and so after you trim you're going to want to remesh your object again. But I use this a lot especially when I'm constructing something like a head. 
Okay, that's the foundation of Blender sculpting. With that knowledge, you only really need practice to start making your own sculpts. Be sure to like and subscribe, and have a good one. Thanks.